And so I think some of us are still sleepy. It's all right. So uh, it's good to be here. I thank God for uh, another opportunity to be able to share a little portion of the scripture with you that uh, in the same topic that we, we've been discussing for the whole month. And today is the last Sunday of May and I wanted to conclude these uh, teachings. And we are reading from Acts chapter 2 verse 37 to 47. I'm not going to read it again because we already have the background of the story and we know already how it goes, how it goes. And today, actually, today I wanted us to talk about God's intention for the church. God's intention for the church. I remember from the beginning when I introduced this uh, lesson we talked about the uh, origin of the church. We talked about the mission of the church. We spoke about the characteristic of the church. We already talked about our intentions when we come to church. But today, I want us to, to see a little bit, very little bit, about what's God's intention for His church. When God looks at the church, what, what does, he, does He expect from the church? Amen? And the first thing that I wanted to suggest us, there are a lot of things that the Lord can look at, but uh, I, I decided to come with some uh, two major things that I think are very important that we're going to um, go over and then we are going to have a moment to pray. And the first thing that I wanted us to discuss is unity. Unity or togetherness oneness being together from the beginning God God's intention was to see people together when he created Adam and Eve and he says be fruitful multiply because God wanted to see them together living together having a happy family and that is the intention of God. He never wanted to be alone. When Jesus comes on earth, when he started his ministry, the first thing that he did, he went and chose disciples. He didn't want to be alone. I'm not saying that being alone, he wouldn't make it, but he wanted to have disciples with him. To have a family together to exercise ministry. And when we talk about the body of Christ, I said last time that one body but has different parts. But all these parts are very important to make the body uh, move or to make the body healthy. And that is God's intention. When God looks at the church, God wants the church to be unified. God never intended the church to have conflicts. God wanted us to live together as a family. Amen. God wants to see us together. And when we are together, we are powerful. One of the, uh, one of the, uh, the teacher that I listened on the YouTube was saying, when you read Genesis chapter 11, they come with one idea and then they were like, let's be one and let's make uh, something that will reach to heaven. And God was afraid with their idea and then he says, I'm going to destroy you. Because God knew when people are together, they can, they can do something really big. And one of the things that the enemy knows, he knows that when the church has the same mind, they pray together. They love one another. They are going to be very strong. So he attacks the church to bring division among us. This is why you see in the church people, they hate each other. This is why you see in the families, people, they don't like each other. They don't talk to each other. Because he knows when we are together, something bigger is going to come up. But I pray that our church will be unified. 
our church will work in unity because this is what God wants from us. From our chapter that we are reading now, I want Mr. Young, would you display um, the, the Bible verse Acts 2 44? Yes, thank you. I want you to look from verse 44. There is something very important here that I want us to catch up. All the believers were what? Together. You can underline that in your Bible. And had everything in common. They, they sold property and possession to give to. I want you to complete me. To give to anyone. That is also together. Anyone who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple court they broke bread in their home in their homes and ate with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor for all the people you can align that sentence all the people which means together and the Lord added to their number their number the number that has been already there and the Lord added more people so that they can be together. Do you understand what I mean? When the, the disciples, they started the church. They were gathering together. They had everything in common. And the Bible even says they sold everything that they had. Because they want to share with one another. You can only do that only when there is love in your hearts. When you think you and I are the same person. When you consider me as your family, as your brother or your sister. You're going to love me and we're going to live in unity. And it is beautiful when people live together. Another Bible verse that says that the church were together is in Act 4.32. The Bible says all the believers were one in heart and in mind. It is also a sign of unity. One in the hearts and one in their mind. But I want to ask you, church, how many times do you think about your neighbor, that person sitting next to you? You think about him for a day or in a week or you just think about me when we meet here on Sunday. Check the person sitting next to you. Just look at them and and ask him the question, did you think about me? Ezekiel, did you think about me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's beautiful. When we see in Ma uh, Matthew 18, verse, chapter 18, 19 to 20, it says, Again, truly I tell you, this is Jesus is taking to his disciple. It says, truly I tell you that if two of you, on earth agree about anything they ask for it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three gather in my name there i am with them god he wants you to pray alone and at the same time god wants you to be with someone pray with your husband Pray with your wife. Pray with your children. Pray together at home. Unity is everything in Christianity. And it's beautiful. The last verse that I want to share with you is Psalms 133 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to be together. God wants you to be together. God wants us to be unified. God He's looking for unity in the church. The second thing that God intends for his church. God is looking for a church that prepares the way of the Lord. God is looking for a church that prepares the way of the Lord. I already spoke that as a church we are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven on earth and when we are ambassadors 
another another role or another task of an ambassador is like the country where you have been sent when the president wants to visit that country you are in charge to prepare everything that will make him comfortable for his stay in that country god wants you and i to live every day a life that is preparing for his coming because he's coming so soon so last time i said he put the holy spirit inside of us that lives in, in us so the holy spirit reminds us every day that i am coming so soon jesus he's coming so soon prepare my way god wants the church to be ready for his coming ready every day not only today but every day because nobody knows the day or the time when jesus will come but the only thing that the bible requires us from us is like just be ready prepare the way in isaiah 40 verse 3 he says a voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord and when we read from Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, it says, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent, for the kingdom of the Lord is near. How do we prepare the way of the Lord? How do we prepare? The Lord's coming as a church. And I believe that we all repent. We are all saved. But there is more than that. Living in holiness. Getting always close to the Holy Spirit. Asking Him to teach you the ways of God. Looking for God's will every day for our lives. God wants us to prepare to be ready to be taken to him with him and if you're not ready you're gonna miss the coming of jesus christ as we all prepare the christmas and we say jesus came on earth he was born and he became a flesh let us do the same thing every day that we remember that he's coming so soon very soon and we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to be ready as a church. So I want us to go over a discussion. I want you guys to make a group of two, 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 two. You can find someone you sit together so we can have a little discussion for five minutes. And there is an important question that I want us to discuss so here's my question that i wanted us to discuss together ah you're, you're gonna okay good uh so as universal church when i talk about universal church i'm talking about you personal personal as a universal church how do i prepare or represent represent and prepare for the lord's coming are you ready for that so you have uh, five minutes to for discussion and then we're gonna pray together let's do that